This program outlines maintenance procedures for the Ingersoll Rand Aero Half Inch Non Metallic Diaphragm Pump, model number PD05P-X-X-B. When repairing an Aero Half Inch Diaphragm Pump, always use genuine Aero service kits. To repair the air section of the pump, use kit number 637 428. To repair the fluid section of the pump, use kit number 637-427-XX. Tools needed to repair this pump include a 3 8 inch wrencher socket, a half inch wrench or socket, a 7 8 inch wrench or socket, a T10 Torx screwdriver, a torque wrench measuring inch pounds, an O-ring pick. Prior to repairing the pump, make sure it has been flushed. Review the material safety data sheet for the fluid in the pump to determine what safety equipment or apparel may be needed when repairing the unit. Use a half inch wrench or socket to remove the four screws that hold the outlet manifold in place. Lift the manifold. Then remove the O-ring, ball check, and seat. Be careful not to damage the sealing point of the seat. Turn the pump over. Use the half inch wrench or socket to remove the inlet manifold. Then remove the o-ring, seat, and ball check. Be careful not to damage the sealing point of the seat. Use the half inch wrench or socket to remove the eight flange nuts that secure each fluid cap. Use the seven eighths inch wrench or socket to remove the diaphragm nut. Pull the diaphragm and diaphragm washer away from the pump. Models with Teflon diaphragms include a backer diaphragm. Carefully push the connecting rod through the pump center body. Use a 7 8 inch wrench or socket to remove the remaining diaphragm nut, diaphragm, and washer from the connecting rod. Do not mar the surface of the connecting rod during this step. Use the T10 Torx screwdriver to remove the screws that secure the cover. Use the pick to lift the cover. Then use the pick to remove the small O-ring. Remove the large O-ring and the U-cup from the center body. Pull the actuator pin to remove the washer. Separate the actuator pin and washer. Use the T10 Torx screwdriver to remove the screws that secure the opposing cover. Use the pick to lift the cover. The actuating pin and washer may also lift out. If so, Separate the large O-ring, pin, and washer. Then remove the U-cup and small O-ring. Use a socket extension to push the spool bushing from the center body. Push the pilot piston from the bushing. 
Then remove the O-rings from the outer diameter of the bushing and from the center body. Use a 3 8 inch wrench or socket to loosen the four flange bolts that secure the valve block. Pull the valve block and muffler assembly from the pump. Set the muffler aside. Pull the flange bolts from the valve block. Remove both track gaskets from the valve block or center body. Then remove the valve insert and valve block from the center body. Gently tap the valve block on the workbench to remove the small plug from the top of the valve block. Then remove both O-rings from the small plug. Push the major valve spool and the large plug from the valve block. Remove O-rings from the large plug and the valve block. Use a pick to remove both U-cups from the valve spool. This completes disassembly of the pump. Clean all components prior to reassembly. Use Aero service kits when repairing this pump. Apply Lubriplate FML2 grease to the O-rings and U-cups prior to reassembly. A packet of grease is supplied in both service kits. Place new lubricated O-rings on the small plug. Lubricate the internal diameter of the valve block. Insert the small plug into the top of the block. Place new lubricated U-cups on both sides of the spool. Make sure the lips of the U-cups face the center of the spool. Place new lubricated O-rings on the large plug. Lubricate the internal diameter of the valve block and the large plug. Insert the large end of the spool into the large plug. Carefully insert the spool and plug into the bottom of the valve block. Make sure the spool is turned to accept the valve insert. Place the valve insert in the valve block. Make sure the dished or concave side of the valve insert faces up. Place the valve plate over the insert. Make sure the identification dot on the valve plate faces up. Install new track gaskets on the center body and on the valve block. Slide the flange bolts through the valve block. Place the valve block and exhaust assembly onto the center body. Use the 3 8 inch wrench or socket to secure the valve block and exhaust assembly. Using the torque wrench, tighten the bolts to 15 to 20 inch pounds or 1.7 to 2.3 Newton meters. Install a new O-ring on the outer diameter of the pilot sleeve. Place a new lubricated O-ring into the center body. Insert the sleeve into the center body. Be careful not to cut one of the O-rings during this step. Lubricate the new pilot piston and insert it into the sleeve. Place new O-rings on one of the covers. Put a washer onto the cover. Then slide an actuator pin through the assembly. Place a new U-cup on the center body. 
Put the cover assembly into position. Secure the cover with the four screws. Tighten the screws to 4 to 6 inch pounds or 0.45 to 0.68 newton meters. Place new O-rings on the remaining cover. Position the washer and insert an actuator pin through the assembly. Place a new U-cup on the center body. Then put the remaining cover assembly into position. Secure the cover with the four screws. Tighten the screws to 4 to 6 inch pounds or 0.45 to 0.68 newton meters. Place a diaphragm washer and diaphragm on one end of the connecting rod. Make sure the chamfer side of the washer faces the diaphragm. Secure with a diaphragm nut. When replacing Teflon diaphragms, install a backer diaphragm behind the Teflon unit. Using the insertion tool, slide the lubricated connecting rod through the pump center body. Install the remaining diaphragm washer and diaphragm on the connecting rod. Make sure the chamfer side of the washer faces the diaphragm. Attach the remaining diaphragm nut. Using the torque wrench and a 7 8 inch socket, tighten the diaphragm nut to 95 to 105 inch pounds or 10.7 to 11.9 newton meters. Position a fluid cap onto the center body. Reference the bottom to top flow pattern when assembling the fluid caps. Secure with the eight flange nuts. Use a half inch socket and the torque wrench to tighten the flange nuts to 50 to 60 inch pounds or 5.6 to 6.8 newton meters. Attach the remaining fluid cap. Secure the unit with the eight flange nuts. Use a half inch socket and the torque wrench to tighten the flange nuts to 50 to 60 inch pounds or 5.6 to 6.8 newton meters. Turn the pump upside down. Install a ball check, seat, and O-ring into each fluid cap. Position the inlet manifold onto the fluid caps. Secure with the four flange nuts. Torque the flange nuts to 50 to 60 inch pounds or 5.6 to 6.8 newton meters. Install ball checks seats and o-rings into the outlet manifold. Position the outlet manifold onto the fluid caps. Secure with the four screws. Torque the screws to 50 to 60 inch pounds or 5.6 to 6.8 newton meters. This completes disassembly and reassembly procedures for the Ingersoll Rand Aero 1 half inch non-metallic diaphragm pump model number PD05P-X-X-B.